It's yours, Charlie. Great. Our next speaker is uh, Terry Hua. Terry, uh, please tell us about your living history. All right. Well, thank you uh, very much, Tri, and uh, the team uh, for putting this very interesting series together and uh, for inviting me to, to join this. Uh, so I thought I would uh, focus on one particular episode of my uh, my life, uh, my scientific uh, career, of um, a major one that is a transitioning from a theoretical physicist to a experimental microbiologist. Right. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, so I, well, I'll start with uh, uh, my PhD and postdoc work, which is a rather standard uh, stuff in uh, physics, um, uh, non equilibrium dynamics and disorder system. And that's a kind of a typical type of topics one would learn for so someone uh, interested in complex um, phenomena in the, at, at, in, in the late 80s, early 90s. That's when, when I was sort of uh, getting, getting educated in physics. Uh, I should mention that there's one uh, part of me, so uh, even as undergraduate and also uh, in my uh, PhD thesis, uh, had, uh, I had done some experiments so that they both made into sort of my, my, my thesis, and that turned out actually to be quite uh, useful in my later transition, even though that had nothing to do with biology. Um, so when I, um, uh, when I arrived at UCSD, uh, in uh, 1995, I immediately uh, switched to theoretical biophysics. I was actually hired into a plasma physics group, uh, but then uh, 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 San Diego area is very sort of open in terms of nonlinear dynamics and all that, and and uh, and uh, uh, nobody had a problem for me to transition even at that time because biophysics wasn't really accepted as a as a thing. Um, so at the at the time, my interest was more in molecular information processing, or if you were molecular recognition. So I was interested in protein-protein interaction, protein-DNA interaction, uh, RNA folding, transcription uh, regulation, things like that. Okay. Uh, as I studied uh, these problems, uh, then it got to a point where we were uh, uh, thinking about combinatorial transcription control uh, in bacteria. And there were these ideas that were uh, dawned on us to home, whether, uh, whether it would be interesting to test them experimentally. Right? So then, uh, of course, I uh, looked into how experiments were done and all that. Uh, but it was uh, really just a thought. And uh, I want to uh, thank uh, Stan Leibler, uh, who, uh, who himself was a theoretical physicist and got into experimental biology. And he very uh, strongly encouraged me uh, to uh, uh, take on biology uh, uh, experimentally. And that uh, really made a big difference. And uh, in, in um, I guess, in thinking about these uh, ideas as being thought to actually you know, taking it on right? uh, as, as a career. Um, <clears throat> so that was uh, uh, fine, but then there's really a big gap uh, uh, between having an idea, romanticizing an idea of, a, uh, of starting a lab and actually uh, having an operating lab, right? In particular, there's a problem with the people funding space and all, the, all that stuff. And uh, so my lab actually started in September 2003, which is almost exactly 20 years ago. And but then by the summer of 2000, uh, 2002, which was a, a year before, I was I was sure I wanted to do an uh, experiment. I had no idea how to get there, right? But then quickly within the uh, matter of this uh, one year, I sort of everything solved itself. And I want to share a bit of uh, uh, that was rather quite uh, amazing. So for one thing about people, well, Albert Lefchaber, who was at the time at, uh, had the lab in, a, uh, in the NEC research lab in Princeton, he was closing his lab, moving to Rockefeller. And then his very capable uh, technician, uh, Shumo Liu, uh, became available. And Shumo was interested in kind of coming to the West and uh, uh, helping me uh, get started. And we had some similar, we shared some similar maybe uh, scientific uh, uh, challenges. And so, so, oh, that's great. So that we 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 have some if someone that has experience uh, running that and get started. But so we say, okay, let's 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 start I mean, in a year. That's when our first level close. Except that I had no idea how to pay him. Uh, and um, uh, okay, so then uh, so at the time, okay, I did get the okay from. Uh, uh, so I had fifty thousand left over. 
uh, from a theory grant, a theory in you know, investigator or something, and I got okay to uh, move it to do uh, to buy uh, equipment. And uh, uh, eBay just became uh, a popular at that time, so that was very useful. So we were driving to local dentist office to get like uh, uh, autoclave and things like that. Uh, but that was not enough. Uh, but then it so happened, I was uh, sitting uh, uh, at a meeting, I was sitting next to someone who turned out to be a program director from a DOE. And so I told him about kind of a, my, my, my intention to start a lab and stuff. Maybe he was uh, uh, impressed by my naivety or uh, exotic kind of a uh, quest. And I said, well, you know, I had some maybe leftover, it's towards the end of our fiscal year, we have some uh, leftover from, why don't you write me a grant? <laughs> and uh, so I wrote him a one year grant. Uh, so the, uh, the, the uh, no, I, no, remember, I have not had any experience in even writing a, uh, experimental biology paper, right? So they're trying to get things uh, going. And uh, yeah, so then, so that was uh, fortunately, um, uh, it was uh, funded. And uh, uh, then, uh, so then about space, uh, I don't know about other universities, but certainly at the University of California, space is probably one of the most sort of sought after resource. It doesn't matter how much uh, uh, resource you run or you raise, but there's no space, there's no space, right? But uh, but it so happened that we had a new building that's being built, an uh, interdisciplinary building, and one floor is given to physics, but then this building was uh, uh, built in the style of this open biology lab, and no physicists wanted to move in. Okay, so I had space. and But then they they, they loaned me this space for two years, thinking that I will be over with my mid, mid-age crisis, and, and in two years, it'll just be, be away with it, right? And okay, so I got space. And so in September 2003, that building just opened up with the first to move in. And uh, that uh, I got a $170,000 uh, grant from DOE that arrived uh, on September 1st. And then Shumo Liu drove a big truck, the biggest, taking all of the uh, supplies, leftover supplies, equipment from our best lab, and they drove across the country. And uh, we started in September, everything sort of together. Okay, so let's get started. It was quite fun. And um, so then, uh, so that was the easy part, right? And then they said, well, then what about this? Now this is the lab, what, what would we like to do? So that was uh, uh, the, uh, uh, so that took a lot more. And I want to uh, uh, recount various uh, sort of uh, inputs that, that determined sort of later on how, uh, what direction we took in our lab. Okay. So first I will say, uh, by early uh, focusing on bacterial transcription control, it made me realize both the importance of having something very concrete, for example, a transcription factor, a binding site, actually, a, a, a concrete piece of something, right? Uh, how important that is in, in uh, sort of crystallizing one's idea and checking one, whether one is right or wrong. Uh, but then also I see uh, certainly limitation in this very gene-centric paradigm that's dominant in biology. Right? Uh, then it, it, uh, I spend a lot of time talking to my biology colleagues. Right. And especially uh, uh, my uh, good friend, uh, Bill Loomis, uh, we, will, we, will, we will have several lunches in a week. And after lunch, we will talk for two, three hours at a time. Okay, And uh, during this time, I want just to learn a lot about how biologists think, how they design experiments, right? what, how do they get convinced of something. Okay, Now, I do not agree on everything, uh, no, the, the approach. But then it was very important for me to understand how 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 this very uh, different type of way of thinking and and the, and the people that I, I will be communicating many of the results to because they know a lot about the system. Then um, I got interested in uh, metabolism. Uh, why? Because uh, I started with transcriptional regulation. A lot of the bacterial transcriptional regulation, re regulation is about regulating metabolism. So you need to to understand. Uh, you need to understand what the metabolism is doing. But it was very difficult for me. Right? You were overwhelmed by a war chart of these metabolic pathways. Okay. Uh, but then uh, one day uh, at the meeting, I uh, met uh, Anton Danchon, who was uh, a uh, who got his PhD as a, a mathematical physicist at Economel, but then he became a geneticist. And so it was somebody that and, and knows a lot about metabolism, right? So, so the, the, that was a bridge. So then I invited myself to his lab for, for I mean, Pasteur um, for summer. And then basically uh, I, I told him every week, just give me several hours, just tell me about something 
you're interested. Something about metabolism you're interested in, right? And uh, and then so he would uh, he would uh, we would be on the blackboard. He would tell me uh, for a couple hours. Most of what about several of the problems is interesting, and most of the thing went way over my head. But then what I learned was that it is possible for a human being to think intuitively about this wall chart, right? And that was somehow enough. And then when I went back, then you know, then the, uh, for the problems I was interested in, I was able to, was enough to get me over the barrier that it is possible to think about it. And after some time, I was able to develop my own way of thinking about this very complicated metabolic stuff. All right. And then I will want to mention that there's a, uh, uh, I was very fortunate uh, to have uh, met Sidney Kustu, uh, who was a microbial uh, physiologist at uh, UC Berkeley. He's, she was uh, probably the closest I had of a mentor uh, in microbiology. We would have uh, extensive email exchanges. At that time, there's no Zoom. Right? Uh, but then we met very sparingly, maybe once a year for one, two days after some uh, meetings. Uh, Sydney taught me really the importance of respecting cell, not as a bunch of molecules, a bunch of this and that that you're studying, but really as a living organism. Right? And that was really my transition to bacterial physiology. Um, <clears throat> okay, so the final piece that was important was that uh, the uh, I was assigned to teach undergraduate thermodynamics for the first time, uh, at, just around that time. And it forced me to think about development of thermodynamics, and it made me appreciate the very important role of phenomenology in the maturation of a scientific discipline. So with all of these ingredients, it was not uh, surprising that the early part of our, our life and continue to be part of our life is a series of phenomenological studies on bacterial growth. Right? Uh, the, okay, so then I, I would uh, uh, skip this, and then uh, the, I just uh, end by giving some uh, uh, tips to early career scientists, and I, I see that it's quite similar to what other people have uh, uh, listed at, at their end. I think the most important is be adventuresome, and uh, remember why you become a scientist when, 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 whenever the time you are, right? When you're a kid, when you're in, in high school, in, in college, and so forth. You live only once, and you've got to try Okay, to follow your passion. And then the other thing I want to say is, uh, you know, the, we, the, science these days are dominated by lots of uh, tricks. Okay, but then I think it's important to also go back to learn from history and learn from the masters uh, from history. And uh, then lastly, I would say you know, one aspect of education we almost, we often neglect is the, to learn about yourself. Okay, I learned a lot about myself that I didn't know about at the age of 40 when I transitioned to a microbiologist. Okay, early on, it was very clear. I was not a good pipetter, okay? And so that I did not go into biology and that I didn't think I would be an uh, experimentalist. But then it turned out I was a pretty good and I really enjoyed the designing experiment, okay? And uh, in, in interpreting data, in, in looking for things uh, in data. And that aspect of me, I would never have known about myself right, if I didn't have gone into uh, this adventure. Okay, so that's all. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Terry. I'm um, applauding on behalf of the audience. Uh, thank you for a very uh, interesting talk. Uh, so uh, one question um, uh, to, um, you know, to kind of build off of this last piece of advice um, to, you know, to an early career scientist who's thinking about ma making such a major transition as the one you did, like what steps would you advise them to think about before they embark on, on this type of uh, change? Yeah, well, well certainly you, you 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 need to know what you're you're getting into, right? And uh, I mean, you need to you need to know you need to know why, but then but uh, why you want to get into this? Hopefully, it is not uh, for uh, well, I mean, you know, it could be for career, or whatever. But hopefully, you, you know, as a scientist, you follow your passion in science, right? But then, of course, you, know, you, you want to know about this area, and you want to know about both. It's a uh, uh, the, the new opportunity offers and also uh, the limited new challenges. All right, great, thank you, thank you. And we have uh, one other question. Uh, do you see the divide between theory and experiments now as being more fluid? Oh, sorry, can you ask that again? Uh, do you see the divide between theory and experiments as being more fluid now? Uh, I, I do not see there's a divide, but there should not be a divide. Okay, in, in physics, that's very, very highly developed. You really need specialists to do a lot of things, right? But, but uh, uh, in the area of uh, biology, I mean, microbiology, I'm using 1950 technology, 
Okay, most of the experiments we could do could have been done 50 years ago, except when maybe you know sequencing and a few few of things that's now can take for for granted. Okay, but the, the, we know so little about biology. There are many many low lying fruits. Okay, just take people to look. We need we need more people to look from different perspective and see what this. Is. Great, thank you, thank you again for a, a great talk.